welcome back to Anne of Green Gables. We are in chapter 19. Our words are clickety clack, emphatically, pung, gadding, dire, grammar, crescendo, pompadour, tam, waste, fresco, sated. That's just one page, right? No, it's two. My bad. Here we go. Furtive, look before you leap, which is a proverb. Pensive, arduous, and rarity. Which one? I just read it. Which one? Grammar? Gadding. Gadding about. All right, here we go. Page 146, you are on. A concert, a catastrophe, and a confession. Wonder who's doing the confessing. Anne's been doing an awful lot of confessing lately. I wonder what's going on. Another one of my favorite chapters. I think this is the third time I've told you that, but it's true. Fourth Maybe chapter in a row. Six. Maybe eight. Oh, I'm Maybe telling you. Marilla. Marilla, can I go over to see Diana just just for a minute? Asked Anne, running breathlessly down from the East Gable one February evening. I don't see what you want to be traipsing about after dark for, said Marilla shortly. You and Diana walked home from school together and then stood down there in the snow for over an hour more. Your tongue's going the whole blessed time. Clickety-clack. So I don't think you're very badly off to see her again. What do you think? Clickety, well, okay. So clickety clack is, it's called an onomatopoeia. That's such a fun word to say, onomatopoeia. Just a second. Onomatopoeia. It is a noise, you are right. Clickety clack is onomatopoeia, O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A, -O -O -E onomatopoeia. And it's a word, or words in our case, that means a sound. So it's a sound. So clickety-clack, clickety-clack, that's a sound. All right, onomatopoeia, clickety-clack. But... But she wants to see me, pleaded Anne. She has something very important to tell me. How do you know she has? Because she just signaled to me from the, her window. We have arranged a way to signal with our candles and cardboard. We set the candle on the windowsill and make flashes by passing the cardboard back and forth. So many flashes mean a certain thing. It was my idea, Marilla. I'll warrant you it was, said Marilla emphatically. And the next thing you'll be setting fire to, the curtains with your signaling nonsense. What do you think emphatically means? Um, emphatically? Emphatically, what does that mean? I, I'll warrant you it was, said Marilla emphatically. You are close. It means marked by emphasis. How is that close? Well, because... If I say sit down and you don't sit down, I would say it emphatically. I said sit down. So a lot of times when I'm saying something emphatically, my voice gets louder or, grumpy. or grumpier or lower. I said sit down. Hang on, we got a question. I'll warrant you it was. Um, I think this means like, I bet you're right, basically is how I read it. Or I agree with you. 
That's not the warrant that somebody swears out against you to arrest you. That's like... Something. I think you're right is the way I read it, but... I just said it was not a cop warrant. Uh, warrant means sanction, authorization, guarantee security, confirmation. So she's like, yeah, I'm betting you're right. So she's confirming that Anne's right. Marilla's confirming Anne's right. And the next thing you'll be setting fire to the curtains with your signaling nonsense. Oh, oh, we're very careful, Marilla, and it's so interesting. Two flashes means, are you there? Three means yes, and four, no. Well, are you going to flash four if you're not there? That is silly. Five means come over as soon as possible because I have something important to reveal. Diana has just signaled five flashes, and I'm really suffering to know what it, what, what it is. Well, you needn't suffer any longer, said Marilla sarcastically. You can go, but you're to be back here in just 10 minutes. Remember that. Anne did remember it and was back in the stipulated time, although probably no mortal will, know, will ever know just what it cost her to confine the discussion of Diana's important communication within the limits of 10 minutes. But at least she had to make good use of them. Oh, Marilla, what do you think? You know what tomorrow, that, you know tomorrow is Diana's birthday? Well, her mother told me she could ask me to go home with her from school and stay all night with her. Sleep over. And her cousins are coming over from Newbridge in a big pung sleigh. So that's the pung sleigh. I've got the picture for you. The big pung sleigh. Okay, big pung sleigh to go to the debating club concert and at the hall tomorrow night. And they are going to ask Diana and me to the concert. If you let me go, that is. You will, won't you, Marilla? Oh, I feel so excited. You can calm down then because you're not going. You're better off. You're better at home in your own bed. And as for the club concert, it's all nonsense. And little girls should not be allowed to go out to such places at all. I'm sure the debating club is a most respectable affair, pleaded Anne. I'm not saying it isn't, but you're not going to be gadding about to concerts and staying out all the hours of the night. Pretty, pretty doings for children. I'm surprised at Mrs. Barry letting Diana go. What do you think gadding means? No guesses. All right. Gadding means to go out. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, it really moved, didn't it? Sorry. To go out without. A specific aim. Or purpose. Yeah, to play. So, like, sometimes I will say to my niece, hey, do you want to go play with me? <laughs> like, do you want to go? And she's like, well, where are we going to go play? And I'm like, well, I thought about going to play in Mount Pleasant. And then she'll say, well, where do you want to go in Mount Pleasant? And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of times if I go to Mount Pleasant, I'll go to, like, Joanne Fabrics. I will go to, um... I I know where crumble cookie is. I've never been a crumble cookie. I've had crumble cookies and I, I wasn't real thrilled. Um, so a lot of times if I go, a lot of times if I go, I will go to Joy and Fabrics. I will go to uh, Hobby Lobby. Um, a lot of times if I'm up there, I'll go to Staples. Do you go to Dick's I don't usually go to Dick's. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, I don't. They have yarn at Hobby Lobby and Joann's, but don't usually buy yarn from there anymore. Um, sometimes, sometimes, like if like a lot of times, I'll go to Target when we're up there because Target has some cool stuff. Um, 
And then there's a pet, not pet smart, but there's another pet place that we go up to get Jasper's food at. Um, but I mean, I don't, we don't do it that often because to drive up there just to go gadding about is kind of silly, but it's kind of fun sometimes. So that's gadding about. Okay, here we go. I don't usually go all the way. If I'm going to do Taco Bell, there's a Taco Bell here. There's a Taco Bell in Elma. I don't usually go all the way up there to go to Taco Bell. Now, when I've been gadding about up, up in Mount Pleasant, I have stopped at Big B. My mom likes to go to Big B. I don't necessarily drink well, we're in a Big, big B. Big now. I know. When, when they do, well, baby, my mom will probably be there every day. What? They will be, yep. All right. Uh, but it's such a very special occasion, mourned Anne on the verge of tears. Diana has only one birthday in a year, and it isn't as if birthdays were common things. Marilla Prissy Andrews is going to recite Curfew Must Not Ring Tonight. That is such a good moral piece, Marilla. I'm sure it would do me lots of good to hear it. And the choir are going to sing four lovely, pathetic songs that are pretty near as good as hymns and oh marilla the minister is going to take part yes indeed he is he's going to give an address that will be just about the same thing as a sermon please mayn't i go marilla you heard what i said Anne, didn't you take off your boots now and go to bed it's past eight oh, I want to make a prediction. go Mm. What? Did you ever have a mom who makes you have to go to sleep? Your mom can't let you go to sleep past um, seven as a kid. Yeah. You mean I had to go to bed at seven o'clock? Like go to bed at six. Like, you a bedtime? Like, I had a bedtime six? growing up. I don't know that it was six or seven, I but I had a bed. Like All right, Nine. back. To business here we go <sighs> you heard what I said and didn't you take off your boots now and go to bed it's past eight there's just one more thing Marilla said Anne, with the air of producing the last shot in her locker mrs. Barry told Diana that we might sleep in the spare room think of the honor of your little Anne being put in the spare room bud it's an honor you'll have to get along without. Go to bed, Anne, and don't let me hear another word out of you. With When Anne, with tears rolling over her cheeks, had gone sorrowfully upstairs, Matthew, who had been apparently sound asleep on the lounge during the whole dialogue, opened his eyes and said decidedly, Well now, Marilla, I think you ought to let Anne go. I don't then, retorted Marilla. Who's bringing this child up, Matthew? You or me? Well, now you, admitted Matthew, don't interfere then. Well, now I ain't interfering. It ain't interfering to have your own opinion. And my opinion is that you ought to let Anne go. You think I ought to let Anne go to the moon if she took the notion? I've no doubt, said Marilla, Amiable was Marilla's amiable rejoinder. I might have to let her spend the night with Diana if that was all. Oh, I might have let her spend the night with Diana if that was all. But I don't approve of this concert plan. She'd get go there and catch cold like as not and have her head filled up with nonsense and excitement. It would unsettle her for a week. I understand that child's disposition and what's good for her what's good for it better than you Matthew I think you ought to let Anne go repeated Matthew firmly argument was not his strong point but holding fast to his opinion certainly was <clears throat> Marilla gave a gasp <gasps> of helplessness and took refuge in silence the next morning when Anne was washing the breakfast dishes in the pantry Matthew paused on his way out to the barn to say to Marilla again I think you ought to let Anne go, Marilla. For a moment, Marilla looked things not lawful to be uttered. Then she yielded the inevitable to the inevitable and said tartly, Very well, she can go. Since nothing else will please you, 
Anne flew out of the pantry, dripping dishcloth in hand. <gasps> Marilla, Marilla, say those blessed words again. I guess once is enough to say them. This is Matthew's doing, and I wash my hands of it. If you catch pneumonia sleeping in a strange bed or coming out of that hot hall in the middle of the night, don't blame me. Blame Matthew and Shirley. Oh, blame Matthew. And Shirley, you're dripping greasy water all over the floor. I never saw such a careless child. Oh, what? such a careless child. What? He's dripping what? Greasy water all over the floor. Like dish water. Yeah, gray, greasy dish water all over the floor. I know. I'm a great trial to you, Marilla, said Anne repentantly. I make so many mistakes. But then just think of all the mistakes I don't make, although I might. I'll get some sand and scrub up those spots before I go to school. Oh, Marilla, my heart was just set on going to the concert. I never was to a concert in my life. And when the other girls talk about them in school, I feel so out of it. You don't know just how I felt about it, but you see Matthew did. Matthew understands me, and it's so nice to be understood, Marilla. Yeah, she's never been to a concert before. Like Travis Scott? Me either. And she, how old is she? <laughs> Tell me where the least contact concerts I want to go to. Right yeah, so, but, but realizing you guys have been able to listen to music, right? You, because we, you guys gave a concert for Grandparents Day, right? And even though part of you guys were singing, but part of the time you were listening, right? So you've, We've been to a band concert before, right? You've been to a band concert? The band's no. come down to play for you guys before, haven't no. they? No. That's not a concert, though. We could be there. I never been to a It doesn't mean it's not a con. Well, I think what you're thinking is I've never gone to see one of my favorite bands play or something. That is a concert, but there's also, like, Ithaca High School has con band concert and a choir concert. Yeah, and concert. so yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Anne was too excited to do ju herself justice as to lessons that morning in school. Gilbert Blythe spelled her down in class and lef left her clear out of sight in mental arithmetic. Anne's consequent humiliation was less than it might have been, however, in view of the concert and the spare room bed. She and Diana talked so constantly about it all day that with a stricter teacher than Mr. Phillips, dire disgrace must inevitably have been their portion. Dire means extreme disgrace. So dire means extreme. So if she didn't have a different teacher, she might have had extreme disgrace. What? Oh, I have, yep. Wait, what, How many? What concert was it? Travis Scott? Uh, uh, we are moving on. All right. Anne felt, Anne felt that she could not have borne it if she, had been, if she had not been going to the concert. For nothing else was discussed that day in school. The Avonlea Debating Club, which met fortnightly, so every two weeks, all winter had several smaller free engage, entertain, entertainments, but this was going to be a big affair. Admission was 10 cents, so it cost a dime, and eight of the library. The Avonlea young people had been practicing for weeks, and all the scholars were especially interested in it by reason of older brothers and sisters who were going to take part. Everybody in school over nine years of age expected to go except Carrie Sloan, whose father shared Marilla's opinions about small girls going out to night concerts. Carrie Sloan cried into her grammar all the afternoon and felt that her life was not worth living. Grammar talks about the rules. So it's an English book. It's an English book. Or English language book. Don't we do grammar? We do. I want the club. Hold on. English language book. It's kind of like 
our DLR, Daily Language Review. Um, Mr. Richardson. What? Um, as a kid, was there any such thing as a chess club? Uh, not when I, not in my school when I was a kid, but yes, other schools had chess clubs. A club is a group of people that like the same thing. Like in the game? Like what? In the game, like video games? All right. All right, here we go. For Anne, the real excitement began with the dismissal of school and increased therefrom in crescendo until it reached a crash of positive ecstasy. Ecstasy, oh my gosh, I can't say talk today. And the concert itself. Crescendo means it's a gradual increase. So uh, a gradual increase, so it's like um, in music, it will start, hmm, and then it gets a little louder, hmm, a little bit louder, hmm, and then by the time it's done, usually it's really loud. Not necessarily higher, but louder. So if everybody's like humming low, and then it gets louder and louder, louder. All right. Back to me. Here we go. They had perfectly elegant tea, and then came the delicious occupation of dressing in Diana's little room upstairs. Diana did Anne's front hair in the new pompadour style. So this is a pompadour. That poofy part in the front is a pompadour. That's the new hairstyle. It's called a pompadour. It was high in the back, high in the front, lower in the back. Pompadour. Well, what does that mean? Hair. I said this is the pompadour. That's their hairstyle. It's a new hairstyle. I gave you a picture so I didn't have to have you guys write a bajillion words trying to figure it out when a picture would make more sense, right? Um, Diana, okay, and Anne tried Diana, tied Diana's bows with, an especial, with a, the especial knack she possessed, and they experimented with at least half a dozen different ways of arranging their hair back. At last they were ready, cheeks scarlet and eyes glowing with excitement. True, Anne could not help a little pang when she contrasted her plain black tam and shapeless tight-sleeved homemade gray cloth coat with Diana's jaunty fur cap and smart little jacket. Black tam is a type of hat. It's a woolen cap of Scottish origin. A woolen cap of Scottish origin. Hold on. Thank you. A woolen cap of Scottish origin. What? Not necessarily. Um, but she remembered in time that she had an imagination and she could use it. Then Diana's cousins, the Murrays from Newbridge came. They were all crowded into the big black, the big pung sleigh among the straw and the furry robes. Anne reveled in the drive into the hall, slipping along over the satin smooth roads with the snow crisping under the runners. So remember, a sleigh is not enclosed which means if it's zero degrees out and it's windy, you feel all zero degrees and windy, which is why they had straw and hay. A lot of times they would have feet warmers for your feet um, and you'd be under furs because you would freeze like popsicles if you weren't. There was a magnificent sunset in the snowy hills and deep blue water of the St. Lawrence Gulf 
seemed to rim in the splendor like a huge bowl of pearl and sapphire brimmed with wine and fire. Tinkles of sleigh bells, and you guys saw sleigh bells possibly yesterday hanging in the barn. And distant laughter that seemed like the mirth of wood elves came at from every quarter. Oh, Diana breathed Anne, squeezing Diana's mittened hand under the fur robe. Isn't it all like a beautiful dream? Do I really look the same as usual? I feel so different that it seems to me it must show in my looks. You look awfully nice, said Diana, who, having just received a compliment from one of her cousins, felt she ought to pass it on. You've got the loveliest color. The program that night was a series of thrills for at least one listener in the audience, and as Anne assured Diana, every succeeding thrill was thrillier than the last. When Prissy Andrews, attired in a new pink silk waist with a string of pearls about her smooth white throat and real carnations in her hair, rumor whispered that the master had sent all the way to town for them for her, climbed the slimy ladder, dark without one ray of light, and shivered in luxurious sympathy when the choir sang far above the gentle daisies. Anne gazed at the ceiling as if it was frescoed with angels, and when Sam Sloan proceeded to explain and illustrate how Zachary set a hen, Anne laughed until people sitting near her laughed too more out of sympathy with her than with amusement at a selection that was rather threadbare, even in Avonlea. When, what? She's laughing because she thinks it's funny or fun and she's having a good old time. And so other people are laughing with her so that she's not laughing alone because it's like, even though it's a little backwards town, they're saying, um, and it, they could have done a better job for their little town. They feel sympathy for her because she's enjoying it so much, so they're laughing with her. Um, and when Mr. Phillips gave Mark Antony's oration over the dead body of Caesar in the most heart-stirring tones, looking at Prissy Andrews, at the end of every sentence, Anne felt she could rise and mutiny on the spot if but one Roman citizen led the way. So frescoed, I'm going to start with frescoed. Frescoed is right here. Frescoed is the art of painting. So it's painting. I saw like a painting word. It's painting on freshly spread. Paper. Nope. Freshly spread. Damn it. Nope. Freshly spread, moist, lime plaster. Oh, cloud plaster. Moist? What? No, it's like lime plaster. White? I mean, like, limey? So, moist means damp or wet. Lime plaster is, um, instead of, so, like, have you ever done drywall in your house? Yeah, so if you've ever drywalled your house before, plaster is what they used to use in the house before it was drywall. And what they would do is called lath and plaster. And so you would have, you would put up, um, if you have an older house, you might have what's called lath and plaster. So they would put boards like this up. And then across the boards, they would fill in the hole and smooth the whole thing out with um, plaster. So it's like a clear, it's it's like a white type of thing. So they'd put a white thing over the. My dad made something like that. He made this, and he had this shaper, so he brought it to me for it. And then he plastered inside. He did layers, so I was like, he did this. He put a plant inside of it, and then he put layers over it. Yeah. He plastered inside? So he like squeezed the bottom? What? So, so this is painting on freshly sp spread moist lime plaster. So you would put plaster and then you'd paint right over it and it would change the look of it. Fresco. Waste is a garment or it's a piece of clothing. Uh, it's a piece of clothing, it's from the waist, 
Or from the neck to the waistline. Did we see that in the Nintendo? You might have, yes. Neck well, waist was like the waist to line. the waist line or just below the blouse. Okay? Let's look at our questions really quick so that we can... Uh, question number one you can do, how do Diana and Ann signal each other? Oh, and then why did Merla allow Ann to go to Diana's house and to the concert? So one and two you can do. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.